course, now that I'm starting, I think I have the hiccups. Do you have any quieter bones you can chew on while you're here? Nope. Me? My eye is twitching. Hello, and welcome to the Once Upon a Corgi channel. That was weird. Hello, and welcome to the Once Upon a Corgi podcast. I am your host, Gabby, and this is a crafty puppy interrupted podcast coming to you from Southern Connecticut. You can find me everywhere online as Gabby Gales and all my hand dyed yarn at Once Upon a Corgi and onceuponacorgi.com. We are joined by all three animals today. So we have Jax, who's angrily snapping. Audrey is chewing on a bone uh, right off of camera. So if you hear any weird crunching, that's what that is. And our producer, Iron is supervising from behind the lights. This is episode 84 and I just want to say a giant thank you to all returning viewers and a hello and welcome to all new viewers. Thank you so much for checking us out. We will have show notes down below and we do have a Ravelry group on under the group tab on Ravelry on, as Once Upon a Corgi podcast. Wow, there is no easy way to say that you have that. Jake got a remote control wand? I'm so sorry. I'm just looking over behind the camera and seeing this box. Hold on. What? When was he gonna tell me? <sighs> Stop. You guys. This is not knitting or anything introductory, but I just found this in our house. <laughs> I need to have a stern talking with this man. When was he going to tell me? When are we going to set it up? <gasps> oh my God. Now we need a wand holding station on the coffee table. I'm dead. This is it. I'm dead. Okay. No, Gabby, you're podcasting right now. You're not here to talk about Harry Potter stuff. This time. Ooh, I forgot this game. I'll get this game. Alright. <laughs> oh, God. Starting off, right. I think that was all the intro stuff that I had to tell you. Right. We don't have a lot of administrati stuff to talk about this week. We will be hopefully getting the pumpkin make-along prize drawing video up. Um, this weekend or the beginning of next week, Joanna is still editing that, so please be patient with us. We're trying. It's been busy, and Vlogmas is going on. We are partaking in that this year, and I'm having a ton of fun showing you the day-to-day -day stuff, and I'm hoping to start including little bits about um, holiday traditions that I used to do as a family. We don't have a ton of traditions as of right now in December, as uh, like me and Jake family because this is a very busy, busy time of year for both of us. So we haven't really done much. I'm sure she's still on the blanket and not creeping into my knits. So with that, let us get into the crafting. Um, we're going to have a pretty, I want to say short episode, but we, I will be going over the make nine in 2018 um, goal that I set myself last year and then going into what my make nine for 2019 is going to be. So hopefully this doesn't go on too long, but we will start off with what am I wearing? I am wearing the Aleska or Aliska pullover by Caitlin Hunter in my hand dyed yarns once upon a corgi in the Edgar Allan Poe club colorways. Um, I do have a listing as a pre-order for this pullover. I am going to be modifying that listing to include the inseparably damp fig lace mohair for the accent and I will be offering it now on um, the Isaac Marie Cutie and Penny base so that's not up yet but it should be by the time this podcast goes up so when I'm recording this it's not up when you see this it will be oh that makes sense uh, and that I am also wearing some hand knit gift socks that Melissa from Skinanigans or Skinanigans I am always afraid I'm mispronouncing that knit me on her sock machine uh, I'm not going to show you because they're covered in dog hair, but it is a 
a one of a kind skein from Sweet Sparrow Yarns and it makes me so happy because Julie is such a good dyer and Melissa is such a sweetheart. I'm so happy that she made me some socks. It's my first um, Sweet Sparrow Yarns socks. I do have half of a skein of hers somewhere in here of I'm a mouse, duh, to be Halloween socks. I just have to knit them up. That's the trick, isn't it? All right, I have no FOs this week and I only have a couple of works in progress that I have actively been working on. So let's get straight into the knitting so we can talk about, oh, whoa, 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 you can't chew on that. One rule, no bones on the bedspread because the bones that they chew on leave a, well, I mean, most bones when you chew on them leave like a, a crunchy residue. And I really like my bedspread. It's a Harry Potter duvet cover from Pottery Barn Teen. And it's not getting covered in dog slobber, just dog hair. But we put their bones in a Kong toy. So technically they don't really get the slobber all over because they can only chew on one side but she keeps sneaking onto my knits. All right, where were we? Uh, whips. I can do this. Focus, Gabby. The first thing I have been actively working on is almost done. I was hoping I could finish it last night, but I did not. And that is ooh, the Pine Creek Pullover by Samantha Guerin Designs. And it's stuck and it's, oh God, what's happening? Hold on, Mayday, okay. And I'm doing a test knit for her. I think this is the front, yep. And it is a DK weight sweater with this beautiful lace yoke. I'm knitting it on my hand dyed yarns on the Isaac DK, which is an 8515 non super wash pull worth in silk. And I'm on the second sleeve. I just finished all the decreases. So I have about five or six inches of regular arm and two inches of cuff to do, and I will be all done and the collar. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the collar yet. I'm going to try it on once the sleeve is done and see what I wanna do. The pattern calls for a rolled hem, but I kinda of like where it is now. So I might um, just bind it off. It does have a provisional cast on for the this bit, so I can play around with it. I am knitting it on my US 7s uh, Knitter's Pride Dreams. The pattern calls, ooh, why am I holding it so high again? The pattern calls for a six, but I did a gauge swatch and that's what I got. And we are just checking along. I love this pattern so much. It was such an enjoyable knit. The lace charts made it so much fun to just go through. And then after a little bit of thinking, you have lots of mindless knitting, which is perfect. I'm hoping to get this done for Christmas and seeing as it is the 14th, I think I can do that. Almost there. I'll probably work on this tonight and finish it up. So I am alternating skeins because I am using hand dyed yarn. So I'm doing helical knitting and I will try to remember to put the link to Grace's tutorial because that's the best one I've seen so far. And this is how much I have left. I believe this is skeins three and four. Um, I have to, yeah, cause I dyed five and I have one skein left at my desk. So I'm hoping I can get the rest of the sleeve out of these two and not have to break into the skein for like the bind off or something. I think I'll be okay. I keep like wandering. And did I say, oh, this is the colorway fairy saddle. I don't know if I said that. And it's just beautiful autumnal coppery orange. I'm obsessed with it. Yeah, I am thoroughly enjoying this knit. I cannot wait for it to be done. I'm very excited to wear it. I'm very excited to see all of her her new sweater pattern that um, we're gonna start testing next year. Oh, I can't wait. Cannot wait. And this is living in my beehive matter root bag. What else is in here? Oh, my notions pouch. That's where that went. And I'm hoping to get this done over the weekend so it will be a finished object by next week. Fingers crossed. I have also been working on my advent knitting which I probably won't show every week 
unless I can catch up because I'm, I think I'm four days behind now, three or four days. And that is the Tale as Old as Time cowl. Uh, this is a pattern by Little Skein the Big Wool and I'm knitting it out of my advent calendar that my friend made me because we do a trade every year. And I believe last time you saw it, it was in here and now we are up to here. And I love it. It's been such a fun, mindless knit. And I love seeing all the colors that Lauren has put together for me. And I believe we are, what are we at? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're on day 10, so we're four days behind. And we do have one more 20 gram mini, so I think I'm just gonna cut that 20 gram mini in half and only put 10 grams in, because otherwise I will fall so far behind. I would like this done by the end of the year because it is a scrappy advent project. I feel like once we get past the advent -y, time i'm not going to work on it as much so that's what i'm hoping i am knitting this on uh us one and a half us two 2.75 millimeter higher higher sharp interchangeables i believe that is what the pattern calls for and yeah it's pretty mindless right now it's just knitting in the round i am weaving in my ends as i go so there we go so then i can just snip them because Everything will be enclosed in the tube, so I'm not too worried about having long, longer ends or anything poking out. So it's all going to be enclosed and finished that way. Not much to say about it. It's just knitting in the round. Pretty mindless. This is going to be a fast episode. Yeah, pretty mindless. Knitting, not a lot to say. It's been my um, Knit While I Dye Yarn project, and it is very much outgrown its little project bag that Lauren made me with my murderino pin, but I'm gonna make it fit anyway. What bag did I put it in? The next project is something that you've definitely definitely seen on the Revelry Hot Right Now and probably all over Instagram for good reason, but I immediately jumped on the bad wagon this time and I have cast on, this looks like a disaster right now, but the northeasterly blanket itchy nose so this is a pattern by melissa from skinanigans or skinanigans skein skinanigans god i'm so sorry i don't know why i can't say that today and it is a uh chevron style modular scrappy blanket and i think this is the scrappy blanket that has solved all my scrappy blanket problems i think so i think we did it it is on Ravelry. It's a $3 pattern, which is way under what it is worth, but it is such a good knit. Um, it does come in a fingering weight and a DK weight recipe of sorts. I am doing the DK weight version and I am taking a page out of Jacqueline's book from Jacqueline Salem. Uh, she's doing an advent penguono and if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend going and checking that out. But she is holding her minis double from either end. So she's marling the minis with themselves. So that is what I'm doing to keep all of the minis together, but I can go through them faster and it's going to be a little bit of a heavier blanket, which I love. The only control aspect I'm doing of this, I am doing um, alternating light and dark minis on either side. So I have a bag of light minis and I have a bag of dark minis. separated out. So I am slowly going through and re-caking everything up so I can pull from either side. And right now I'm working on a, I'm working on the first row so I can build these up a little bit more. And then I think this week I will do one more dark and one more light just to have a good corner block and then really start building up. I don't know how large this blanket is going to be. I don't know how long I'm going to want to work on it. Um, right now I'm just thinking I'll make it like a couch throw size, but honestly, we'll just see. This might just be a forever growing project. I feel like it would be super easy to bind off and then pick the stitches back up and keep knitting without too much disruption in it. I did see that, um, Kemper from Junk Yarn is doing a Junk Yarn only blanket, so I am considering casting on another one in just using regular fingering weight and doing one out of my hand dyed yarn just to have like a nice little memento like chair throw of all the yarns that I've dyed. I feel like that'd be really sweet to have. 
I am knitting it on uh, Knitter's Pride Nova US5 DPNs. So I have a couple live on this, a couple live things going on at the moment, but that's fine. Uh, I was using circulars before and I started looking for a nice pair of straights, but I think straight needles are gonna be too obnoxious. So I might get a nice pair of Luka DPNs for this. I haven't decided. I thought maybe Zings. I might just stick with these. It's just a blanket, but we, you know, whatever. So there we go. It is such an easy pattern to follow and they, she gives you tutorials on how to weave in the ends as you go. So there's no end weaving in. You can just pick up and knit and you attach as you go. So there's no casting on and binding off and casting on and binding off. And it's, I love it. I'm so excited for it. It has turned into my bedtime knitting over the past couple of days. I haven't worked on it in, I wanna say like one or two nights, which is, makes me super sad. Oops, did I do that on the wrong side? Totes did, whatever, that's fine. It's a blanket, no one cares. But I keep it next to my bed and I work on it a little bit before bedtime now. And I'm very excited for it. I have tons of minis to go through. I definitely jumped on like the mini training bandwagon when Cozy Memories was like hopping a couple years ago. And I have some leftovers from my pinwheel scrap blanket. I do still intend on uh, finishing that. I think what I'm going to do is just take all of my tonals and lightly speckled yarns and use that towards the pinwheel and then the leftovers go into this blanket and then all the heavy variegateds will go straight into the northeasterly. I think self-striping I might put into the pinwheel first too. That way I have like a super crazy stripey blanket. No, a super crazy scrappy blanket and then more of a um not cleaner, but less crazy color um, pinwheel blanket. I think that would be really nice. Have my Cozy Memories uh, table runner still. Uh, I don't know what, I, I don't really wanna unpick, not like there's a lot of binding off. It's like you bind off three stitches. So I may go through and unpick a couple of these and put them in. I may not, I don't know. I don't know if I'm just going to I just don't want to weave in any more ends too. So I don't want to say I'll weave in the ends and then make it into something big enough to really make into a pillow or anything. And I don't want it as a table runner. I haven't decided yet. Maybe I'll have a ripping out party over Vlogmas for on my, one of my vacation days. Yeah, maybe that's what I'll do. Cause there are a bunch of Once Upon a Corgi in here. So then I can even just use those to start my Once Upon a Corgi blanket. They're mostly Christmas colors, but that's fine. Let's see, what else? That one's me. That's not really a color. That's not really a color. That's not a color anymore. That was never really a color. Not mine, not mine. This is super exciting for you. That, that was retired. That's already in the blanket. Not mine, not mine, not mine. Yeah, so uh, I just have like these four Christmas colors, I guess, that are still Once Upon a Corgi. Well, no, this one's retired. This one retired. This one retired. <laughs> oh God, you know. The things. We'll see. I do have a whole urn of minis that I'm going to go through and I think um, set aside a couple little baggies and um, make the patchwork, like set aside the eight that I need for the pinwheel blanket into little sets so they're all ready to go and I can just pick them up and go and then get the other ones um, coordinated into the lay and dark bins. So I think that'll be a good day on my vacation that I'm taking over Christmas. I think so, I think that's the plan. And that's all I've been act actively working on. I haven't uh, taken out the electric love. I really wanna get the sweater finished since I'm so close. And uh, yeah, I haven't really worked on the socks. I would like to get at least the winter row socks done before the end of the year so I can cast on um, Jake some socks. I would like to get some socks done for him. I'm debating if I want to knit him these socks for the wedding or if I want to knit these for him for like another occasion, like birthday maybe? Maybe our anniversary. Maybe I'll knit these up for our anniversary. Cause I'm not gonna be wearing 
I could wear wool socks at the wedding. I do have closed-toed shoes. But I'm pretty sure Becky already called dibs on that. Maybe I'll do this for our anniversary. Our last dating anniversary. All right, we are going to do a shop update section real quick and then go into our make nine challenges. So if you are not here for shop update stuff, um, I'll put a little timestamp of when you can skip to if you are interested in the make nine. I just want to get this in before I forget. And if you just wanted to see what I'm working on, thank you so much for watching and we will see you next week. So shop updates are have been happening on the weekends usually around 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I do put a newsletter out every Wednesday or Thursday, depending on when the update's going to be. And I do try and post uh, at least a day ahead of time on Instagram and usually on the announcement bar at the top of the uh, website. So the website is onceuponacorgi.com and you can find all of our hand-dyed yarn there. And we are going to have a pre-order at 9 a.m. December 15th for the Dragons Yarn Club. It is a three month yarn club that will be going out the 15th of January, February, and March. It is inspired by three dragons from movies, books, or lore. So I'm very excited about this. It's three different um, sock weight bases and shipping will be included in the price for months two and three. You just have to pay for shipping when you order it for month one. Um, so that will be club number one of four for 2019. And I'm very excited about all of our clubs. So again, that will be going up December 15th at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will be doing one more Christmas update um, before the holidays. And I will let you know about it next week in the podcast because I will be podcasting next week and they should be going up around the time the podcast airs. So Keep an eye out on Instagram, or if you want the newsletter, you can sign up at onceuponacorgi.com. Let's get into the Make 9 2018. So I did a Make 18 in 2018 goal of nine knitting projects and nine sewing projects. So I wanna do a quick recap of what those were and if I did or did not finish them. So we're gonna do the knitting first. Number one was a colorwork sweater, um, which I did. This is the Aliska by Kaylin Hunter, as you heard. So that was done. The next, um, my number two was the Wicker Work Pullover by Michelle Wong. I did not knit that. Our third was the Mount Pleasant Top by Pippin Pin. And I knit it out of Leading Men Fiber Arts in the Gothic Queen colorway. And it's probably one of my favorite tops. I want 10, or at least two. Four was the Elablind, Elablind? I don't know how to say that, by Eleanor Celestrum. I hope that's how you say it. It's from the pom-pom issue. I don't know, I'll put it down here. Did not knit that, nope. <laughs> Number five was the Lobelia Cardigan by Megan Fernandez, nope. Number six was the Michelada Top by Nadia Stallings. The Michelada was supposed to be knit out of this yarn, but I couldn't get the pattern to work, so I'm not going to knit it. I'm glad I used this yarn for it. The next was the Lumpy Space Shawl by Stephen West. Nope. This is the yarn that I set aside for it. I got it at um, Stitches Midwest a couple of years ago from Brew City Yarns, and it is the Welcome to Night Vale line. I am debating de-stashing these because I don't think I want to knit that shawl, and I don't think I'm going to wear these colors. I do enjoy them, but I don't think I'm going to wear them. So I think these are going to go into a de-stash. They've sat in my stash for three years now and I haven't touched them, I haven't moved them, so I think I think it's time for them to go. Number eight was the Spring into Summer Shawl by Mina Phillip and I have knit that out of my hand spun and this will eventually be sent off to one of my mentors from college when I remember to send it in the mail. Ta-da! Number nine was the Branches and Buds Pullover by Carrie Bostic Hodge and we have finished it and we wore it yesterday. And this is out of Blacker Works Brushwork um, Birthday Yarn in the colors Scumble and Impasto. So four out of five done on the Knitting Make Nine. Not bad, about half. I did try the Michelada, so really four and a half. As for the sewing, to our Make Nine for sewing was the Agnes Top by Tilly and the Buttons. Nope. The Ariel Skirt by Tilly and the Buttons. And we knit, or er, we sewed this out of a black brocade fabric using these black and white buttons into a regular satin non-stick lining. And I thoroughly enjoy this skirt. I wish I had pockets, but 
I think that they would take away from the shape, so I'm not that mad. Number three was the Phoebe dress by Sew so Over at London. Nope. The Heather dress by Sew so Over at London. The Violet top by Colette Patterns, which I have half finished out of this pumpkin material. I have to hem one sleeve and I have to go back and I'm going to rip off, not rip off, I'm going to take off the collar and I believe make it just into a small mandarin collar instead of the Peter Pan collar because it doesn't, it's too, the collar itself is too long so there's nowhere, it's trying to over, there's, it's, there's just too long. It should be ending like back here but it's not. So I'm either going to take it all apart and redo that bit or just make it into a small mandarin collar. I haven't decided yet but it's almost there. The Robe Blue by Deer and Doe? Nope. Saffron Pants by Deer and Doe? Definitely not. The Betty Dress by Sew so Over at London, which I made and it's super wrinkly because it's been in a drawer, um, out of this double gauze by I believe Cotton and Steel in a purpley sparkle and it's probably one of my favorite dresses. Nine is the Bettine Dress by Tilly and the Buttons, which we made out of this knit gray bird fabric which was intended for the heather dress but i'm really glad it is a bateen dress so again we have a four out of five situation on the sewing so not bad not great um i do know that what's holding me up with the agnes top is i just haven't bought the fabric that i want i have it in so many carts on so many websites i just need to buy it that's my problem. So once again, instead of paring it down to just making nine somethings in 2019, I'm doing make 18 in 2019 one more time. Let's see if we can do nine of something. We'll see. The good news with the 2019 one is I have all of the yarn for all of my projects. So everything is ready to go and I believe I own almost all of the patterns. So it's just a matter of scheduling and finishing. So number one on our list again is the Ella Blind. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong by Eleanor um, Celestrum. And I am going to be knitting this out of this Green Mountain Spinnery Sock Art Lana, which is a two ply sock weight out of 100% fine wool in their Ancho colorway. I got this at Rhinebeck, not this year, but last year intended for this sweater when I panic bought pom-pom. So this is ready to go. Number two is the Itchel Pullover by Katherine Clark. I will be casting this on on January 1st. We are hosting it as a knit along with my Tuesday knit group and I will be knitting it out of Dark and Gloomy on from My Hand Ed Yarns on the Isaac base and I will be pairing it with this paint box one of a kind by Stranded Dye Works on her 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon. My Isaac base I believe is the closest weight to this so I think it's going to work out beautifully and I'm very excited for it. Number three is the Lobelia Cardigan by Megan Fernandez. It is knit in a lace weight but I believe Isabel from Fluffy Fibers has knit it in a fingering weight. No, wait, she did lace weight. Who did fingering weight? Maybe she did do fingering weight. She knit hers at a fairy hair by Vine Yarns and after waiting I want to say eight months for fairy hair to come out on a lace weight and it never did I bought two skeins of Outlander on her narwhal base which is the 70 2010 superwash of blueface lester silk and cashmere and so I will be doing many test swatches and knitting it on this I am hoping to have this done for any and all wedding activities as a lovely cropped cardigan because most of our wedding activities will probably be happening in the late summer early fall so it may be a little bit cooler i think this will be beautiful with it so i'm i will be knitting this this year four is the nurtured pullover by andrea mowry and i'm hoping to knit this in either warm and cozy on my cecil base or dye it up cheer or fear which is one of our christmas colorways on the cecil base for it i did originally want dark and gloomy to be in it but now that i'm knitting it into another sweater i don't want to have two sweaters of the same colorway because i decided so but i think cheer or fear would look beautiful in it with a textured um stitch across everything so that is the plan for that 
if I do cheer or fear, I may make it my Christmas sweater for next year. We'll see. Excuse me, computer, come back. Number five is the non-such. I believe I wrote that down wrong by Veronica, Veronica or Veronica Avery. It is in the winter pom-pom that came out right before Rhinebeck. And I will be knitting it out of this Coopworth lamb's wool um, that I got at Rhinebeck this past fall. There is no colorway on it, but it is a light worsted, and I believe the pattern calls for a worsted or a DK. So that will be this. No timeline on it. I would just like it done eventually. I really hope these are all in focus. Next is the Clark socks. I have been wanting to knit these since they came out, so I'm also using this square as any Jacqueline Salem uh, sock pattern because I love them so much. And I picked up this skein of Hell's Bells. Uh, by Magpie Fibers on the Swanky Sock, which is an 80-10-10 um, Superwash Merino Cashmere Nylon Base. So the plan was to knit it in these because it is pretty close to the original color she used. Or somebody knit them up on No Stuck in a Book on my Iron Base. So I may shamelessly do that because they are gorgeous. But this is also beautiful and I think it really wants to be cable socks. Seven is the Soiree Sweater by Emily Foden or Foden. And I picked up these three skeins of Stranded on her 80-20 BFL nylon fingering weight base in yesterday's bouquet colorway. So my plan is to do a gauge swatch and hold it double with a either teal mohair or cream mohair, maybe a mauve mohair, to um, settle out all the speckles and see what happens. If that doesn't work out, if you cannot see the details because of the speckles, this will become a no frills sweater. But the plain is a soiree because I really love all of these colors and I want them to be it. And you can't tell me otherwise. Number eight is this is going to be a new design by Sam from Samantha Garen Designs. So the name is still up in the air, but we are looking at Shady Lady or Throwing Shade Pullover. We haven't decided. And it is a fingering weight, um, pullover that is going to be striped with mohair. So I dyed off a new colorway I am calling Moonlight. Um, this is a test batch still, so I'm, um, uh, the next batch will be a little bit more yellow, but I will be holding uh, Moonlight double with Nightmares Plus Den on my Fangle Ice mohair. So this will be eight. I will be a test knitter for her and I'm so excited. She knit the original on rose gold held double with um, Warm and Cozy on Fig Lace and it is delightful. Number nine is uh, kind of up in the air, so I filled it in with a no frills sweater. I would like to get at least one of these shawl pairings out of my stash next year, but it's also something that is super easy to pick up because I have a lot of gift knitting to do over the next year, which I'm not going to get into because the recipient, some of the recipients do watch the podcast, so no spoilers. But I do have three skeins of Hugh Loco's Stardust on her spun sock, which is her 80-10-10 MCN blend. So I feel like this would also be a beautiful no frills sweater if I held it double with a blue or silver mohair. So that is tentatively up. I got this at Indian Tangled two years ago, or no, last year uh, when she first came to Indian Tangled. And I just hasn't decided what it wants to be yet, but I think a sweater, I think a no frills sweater would be it. Ideally, I would like to add a cardigan in there somewhere. Um, I don't know if I want to knit one or sew one, and I do want to do more color work stuff. So I'm leaving it open. A lot of the sweaters, yeah, actually a lot of the sweaters are complicated, but a lot of them also have a little bit of interest and then straight knitting for the body and stuff. So I think that will lend me to doing other projects as well. It's a lot of garments, but I'm really into garments right now. And my goal with the garments is to use my garment book more often. This is by Yellow Paper Company. Yellow Paper Hat, I forgot. I don't know if it says anywhere. But it is a book that lets you keep track of all of your information and make notes. Amber from Yarn Hoarder sent this along with a gift last year. And so far it only has one sweater in it. So I would like to keep track of my sweaters and their gauge and all that information a little bit better this upcoming year. I mean, it lives in my stash. It should have information in it. 
because we can't just do nine, we're going to do 18 of 2019, we have nine things we also really want to sew. So the first one is a maxi skirt. I kind of really want one. Something silky and flowy or tulle or sparkly or just something giant. Ooh, sorry. Just something long and flowy and yes, I'm just really craving one. And gray. I want a gray one. So that's number one. No pattern picked out, no fabric picked out, but I know what to look for. Number two is the Phoebe dress by Sew so over at London. It is a um, dress made with a knit pencil skirt and a like silky blouse that's attached to it. I feel like that's the perfect style that I really like to wear. It's comfy, it's all in one piece, and I'm obsessed with knit fabric right now. So that is going to be a good one. I have no fabric picked out for it but I will be keeping an eye on it. I do want to get some more um, tonal knits and more of a basic wardrobe set instead of the big print kind of stuff, unless it's floral on black fabric, in which case, bring it on. <laughs> Number three is the Agnes Top by Tilly and the Buttons, and I will be getting that fabric this year. I just want one black and white striped knit top, and I think having a couple other large patterns or just plain knit tops will be super nice to have in the wardrobe to pair with skirts on lazy days kind of thing. Four is pants. I want 2019 to be the year of pants. I have one pair of pants, not including like yoga or leggings or anything. I have one pair of jeans and they are dying. They are holding on for dear life at this moment. So I would like to either make the saffron pants by Deer and Doe the Mia jeans by Sew Over at London, or the Ginger jeans? I haven't decided. I really like skinny jeans. Uh, I know it's better to use like the heavier weight jeans because they will last longer versus the stretch jeans, but I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the heavier weight denim. So I may make, if I make two pairs, ooh, crazy. Um, I'll do one stretch-ish and then one of the heavier weights and see how they go on but I really do like the saffron pants by Deer and Doe. I feel like that's the style uh, I'm going for. I like the high-waisted, I like the skinny jean fit, and I would like to be able to make pockets that fit things like my phone or my keys or anything, just anything, really. Number five is the York Pinafore by Helen's Closet. I have been listening to the Love to Sew podcast and she has been raving about it and looking at everybody's Instagram, I think it's adorable and I want like three of them. I feel like they're really good dye day outfits, they're really good lounging outfits, and they have giant pockets and I'm ready. I think they're gonna be really fun for the summer and the fall. Number six is the Southport dress by True Bias. I have some double gauze fabric that I think would be really cute as that dress and I would like to get a couple of the um, cotton lawn style fabrics to make some simple, plain, or patterned um, throw-on summer dresses, just to have a couple in the wardrobe. I feel like two, two of everything. That way I can mix and match with stuff. I would really like to not have a minimalist capsule wardrobe, but a closer capsule wardrobe. I do find myself wearing the same stuff over and over again, so I think I would like to start really figuring out what that is and making one or two of them one more, two of them when I do make them in a different color, a different pattern, a different fabric, that sort of thing. Number seven is the Lander Shorts by True Bias. I am a huge fan of high-waisted shorts. I used to have tons of pairs. I used to have this great pair of red ones that I bought maybe four times before they finally died. And I do have these ones cut out, so I'm already a step ahead, but that is on it. Number eight is the Molly Top by Sew Over at London. It is a striped knit um, shirt that has a drop shoulder and they use the stripes in different directions to give interest in the sleeves. It is in her capsule wardrobe book, so I do plan on buying that eventually this year. It's got two shirts that get turned into dresses, a pair of pants, and a coat. So I feel like most of those I will wear. The coat's not really my style, but the pants, the shirt dresses, and the tops are really really something I'll wear. And number nine is a frosting. So <laughs> this has been the topic on the Love to Sew podcast for I want to say like two weeks. I feel like this is all they've talked about. And a frosting sew is something you just sew 
just because, just to make you happy, whether it's a faux fur coat that's highlighter pink or you just want to make something out of velvet, whatever you want. So I'm going to leave number nine as my frosting just to make something fun and exciting. Not something I'm gonna wear all the time, but I really want to make it. I will be doing a couple sewing projects for the wedding stuff. Next year will be pretty wedding heavy. Oh god. Yes, what I do with that, I do want to record it just to kind of have that part of the wedding recorded. No, saved? I don't know what I'm looking for, but I won't be releasing any of those until maybe April or May of 2020, so now it won't be shown on here, but I'll release it eventually because I am um, going to make a couple of big things for the wedding. So that's that. And those are my make 18s in 2019. I feel weird calling it a make nine because then I have to say it twice. Oh, that's a lot of talking. So that is the plan. I'm hoping to get a lot of my projects off the needles by the end of this year. I will still be working on Jake's sweater and I'm not including a lot of socks in these because I don't have any sock mojo right now and I feel like a lot of socks, unless they're heavily cabled in pattern or color work, are such quick knits that I don't want to count them as, I don't want to count them towards there because then I feel like I could cheat myself and be like, I made three pairs of socks by March. I'm already a third of the way down my make nine. That's my logic on this. My goal is to make six out of nine. If I can do that on either of these, I will be very happy. And this does not include, uh, I do have some sewing, not sewing, some spinning goals. I would like to get through a lot of my spinning stash. I would like to get one of the fleeces fully combed and carded and if not spun, at least figure out how I'm going to spin it. And I would like to try and get my fleece sent out to a mill just to have it processed. Mostly because I need the bin back, but also because I would really like to spin it. So I want to get through a lot of my fiber. And I would like to go through a lot of my fabric stash. There is some fabric that I bought, some fabric that was gifted to me that I think while I had an idea for it, I don't think those ideas are what I'm looking for anymore. So I would like to get those moved into a home where they will be used instead of sitting in a bag in a trunk under my TV. So I'm going to leave you there. I have tons to do today. And now I just want to start swatching for all of the sweaters. So with that, I will leave you here. I will see you all again next week. Thank you so much for watching. Again, you can find me everywhere online as Gabigales and on my hand IDR now, Once Upon a Corgi. And we will see you next week. Bye.